It's a privilege to be joined today on the summit by Coach Keith Lytle, the longtime assistant baseball coach at Oklahoma City University, and he is taking his first season at the helm as the lead man for the OCU Stars in 2023. Coach, congratulations on the new gig. Well, I appreciate it. It's it's a little heartfelt when people say that to me because it wasn't as planned. You know, uh, this was supposed to be something that Denny and I rode off into the sunset together with. And and uh, so it's still a little awkward for me to to say thank you or hear it. I definitely appreciate it when people say it, but it's it wasn't planned this way. Well, of course, you're talking about the transition following the passing of Coach Denny Craybaugh, who was the longtime coach there as well. And Coach Craybaugh had a, a fantastic career. He passed last summer after a long battle with cancer. And, and Coach Craybaugh, uh, you know, we want to talk about him and mention him just a little bit later on. You were there pretty much the entire time that he was there as well. Got there in 1989. And I heard it said that you were his first recruit. So yeah. talk about your time there at Oklahoma City University as – an assistant coach, you got to mentor so many players, eight national players of the year, including in all of that. Just to, I'd love you to share about your time as the assistant. You know, I don't know how to put it in perspective because it was awful special. Um, I remember this when I first took this job 34 years ago with Denny. Um, I told my wife we had just gotten married and I told her, you know, I'm going to spend five years here as an assistant and then I'll go out and I'll, I'll, try to build my own program somewhere. I'll become a head coach. Well, I fell in love with not only OCU and, and not just the baseball program, the overall environment here was just unbelievable. And of course, my relationship with Denny, we were the perfect couple, if you will, in terms of assistant and head coach. Um, Denny always treated me as his equal. And, and we went on and we started building something really special and, you know, the investment of love and blood, sweat and tears that went into that just drew me to love this place more and more each day. And it was something that I, I felt really compelled to stay and, and keep building on. And and I'm glad I did. You know, there was uh, my wife still reminded me from time to time, you know, you said five years, it's been 10 and then it's been 15 and then 20. But she knew, too, my wife is invested a lot of her own time in our program as Sue Crayball did with Denny and it became a family thing. You know, this is, this is a family program for 34 years. We've preached that to our players and, and uh, when, when it is family, it's hard to let go. And I'm, I'm not at all regretful that I stayed this long. Um, uh, every day I see a piece of Denny and I in this program and, the kids coming back, the alumni that come back and speak so highly about what it meant to play here. I think more than anything else, more than the wins and the national championship appearances, the World Series in 2005 championship, nothing compares to when you hear the kids come back, the alumni, and speak how much their experience here at OCU filters into their everyday life as a as a husband, as a father, you know, and their work for whatever they do for a living, there's a piece of OCU baseball within all of that. And that's, that's, uh, I think what Denny and I were the most proud of. Um, and certainly there's no, there's no thinking. We know that. And that's, that's, that's the most priceless thing that you can ask for as a coach and running your program. Well, Coach, the things you just mentioned there are completely irreplaceable, and uh, there's there's no way that uh, uh, you can top that. I, I I would imagine, and and it is a teamwork thing. It is a it is a blessing to get to do that, as you mentioned, with your wives as well, being supportive like that. Coach, you, your resume is lengthy, uh, very much so, and you also spent some time uh, coaching in the minor league baseball AAA organization there around the Oklahoma city area. You had a chance to uh, work with and, and even mentor and train players like Freddie Sanchez, uh, national league batting championship, had a world series title as well. And Nelson Cruz, uh, you got to double dip a little bit there in the early nineties and, and, uh, work both places. Talk about that. Well, it was a great experience. Uh, I obviously have to look back and again, thank Denny for that because, he was willing to let me go do that in the summers. And it was another reason why I stayed. I mean, I, 
I've got to be honest. I, I got to coach every level of this game at some point in time in my life, other than the big leagues, you know, from, from AAA on down. And, um, and those experiences really helped shape me as a coach and the different experiences and people that I came across uh, working for Bobby Jones, who was uh, the longtime uh, manager for the Red Hawks here in Oklahoma city. And, and, and what a unique person he was and is and, uh, and mentorship wise and and uh but when you you calculate all those experiences it's helped me grow so much as a coach but Denny was always so willing to let me go do that uh in the summers and and uh you know having Freddie here at OCU and then watching him go on and and accomplish what he did uh, at the big league level you know he just uh it's amazing he's certainly our most decorated OCU alumni or player and, and uh, uh, watching him do that. Denny and I still remember when he made the all-star team for the first time. And Denny and I were celebrating in the building when the announcement was made. We were inside and I'd just come off the field working on the field. And, uh, and it was during the summer, of course. And they announced Freddie had made the all-star team. And you'd have thought we were two little kids running around the, the Sutton complex up here just – you know, celebrating the fact that one of our former players was just, you know, added to the all-star team. And of course he went on and won a batting championship. And, and, uh, you know, that was, that was unbelievable. I mean, he beat out Miguel Cabrera for that, that National League batting championship on the last day of the season. And Freddie did such a great job during that run. Uh, he would call me when he was struggling, he would overnight me, CDs of that of his last 20 at bats or whatever and light of what's wrong with my swing and he kept Denny and I in that loop as he traveled through the different levels of the minor leagues all the way to the big leagues all the way to the World Series I actually had a chance being with the Texas Rangers uh they the Rangers ended up playing the Giants and and uh it was overwhelming for me they they asked me you know who are you rooting for <laughs> and I said, well, when Freddie's up, I'm rooting for the, for Freddie. Other than that, I'm still – I work for the Rangers. I'm, I'm a Rangers fan. So it was really me. He still teases me, by the way, Freddie does, because he got the bigger ring. I got the American League championship ring, being part of the, the coaching staff and the organization. We all got rings. But Freddie got the bigger ring. He likes to tease me about that. Um, and then, like you said, you know, being around – guys like Nelson Cruz and Chris Davis and Josh Hamilton on rehab assignments and Ian Kinsler. And I'm leaving out too many. I shouldn't have started mentioning names, but I think more than anything else, sometimes what's lost is I get credit for being associated with them, but I probably learn more from them being that level of a player than I ever taught any of those guys. You know, it's, it's, it was really special. Though. They all embraced me. Um, they all knew I would only say something if necessary. And and usually I'd wait until they said, Keith, what do you got? You know, what, what do you see? You know, because when you're dealing with guys like that, they're obviously highly gifted and, and successful. And, and I think they appreciated the fact that I didn't overcoach with them. And uh, but what a wonderful that was unbelievably enriching to me as a coach to be around the, that caliber of player on a daily basis for you know, four or five years. So we're speaking now with coach Keith Lytle from Oklahoma city university, the new head coach for the stars coming into the 2023 season here on Midwest sports net. And I encourage you, please like the video, share the video. I'm enjoying the conversation and I hope you are as well. And subscribe to the channel. It really does help us uh, subscribing to Midwest sports net coach. I, I know you, you've throughout our conversation so far, you've talked about coach Craybaugh and, and rightfully so uh, he surpassed the, 1600 win plateau this past season in 2022 did it in the playoffs the nai playoffs his career culminated with 1601 wins numerous playoff appearances numerous 50 win seasons you mentioned also the 2005 championship i, I know that uh, it, it's important that we talk about him because as you mentioned it's not quite the transition the way you would have written it up uh, and so we need to talk about him and, and what he meant to ocu he meant everything, Joey. I, I I can't even begin to express to you. Obviously, when you step back and, you know, we were uh, – some people referred to us as Batman and Robin and, you know, different analogies. Just, you know, you, th you spent 34 years with somebody. 
the bottom line is, is Denny was my brother. And um, sorry, I miss him every day. Uh, when I look back and realize what he meant to this program, more importantly, what he meant to the boys that he mentored, he was the ultimate example of integrity. Uh, I can think of a lot of words that describe Denny, but that's my favorite. Uh, Denny never stepped out of line, uh, even when it even when it lessened something that we had to gain, you know. And and uh, and I I always watched him do that with admiration. Uh, it was every day. There was never a day that I saw Denny do anything that wasn't right in terms of integrity or uh, even, for example, I'll give you an example. If we had a player that wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing, either especially off the field in terms of going to class, for example, well, he tells him at the beginning of the year, every year, if you don't go to class, you're not going to play. And there's been numerous times where we've had that happen you know, that that we end up benching our best player, for example, but for the overall benefit of the whole team to set the example. I mean, he did it with everybody. He was consistent, but then he never compromised those kind of things. He was such a man of integrity that once we knew or we laid out the blueprint for how we do things here at OCU, you were, you were required and demanded to follow those guidelines. And and um, it's tough love. Denny was so good, you know, at, at that tough love. To me, I always explained it as I don't have to accept you, you the way you are, but I can show you what you're capable of being. Well, sometimes that comes with tough love. But within that, the players learn lessons that, like I said earlier, that follow them way past OCU baseball and and uh, into their, their, their life after baseball as a husband – as a father, so on and so forth. And, and, um, but my personal experience with Denny is with gratitude. I say, I, I love the man because he allowed me to be his equal, if you will. He never treated me any less than, than his equal. Uh, there were times where Denny would get coach of the year, for example, and he tried to give me the the trophy, you know, the, the coach of the year. He felt like I deserved it more than he did. And that's just Denny, you know, and of course I, I balked at that. I was like, I know, uh, you know, and, and, and it worked out in, the, in a manner that, that, uh, you know, I just, it was more knowing that he wanted me to have that than the actual trophy meant in the first place. You know, it was like that, that was just Denny and he treated people that way. You know, every day I saw that man go out and try to show people the best of what was in them, you know, the best version of themselves. And and uh, he did that am amazingly. Well, Coach, I, obviously, I'm sure many, many memories, and you shared some of them as well, too, uh, uh, including I, I think it's pretty special, the one with uh, with uh, Sanchez and his recognition as an all-star and just celebrating like that in, in championships and, and all the playoffs. Is there anything in particular that stands out to you? I mean, 34 years, that's a lot to choose from in, in just a small amount of time, but uh, I want to give you that opportunity. Well, I think, you know, obviously it's too easy to go back and, and look at the 2005 championship after losing three in a row in the national championship game. You know, we went three years, where we made it to the national championship game and we lost and then we finally won it in 2005. And it's too easy to go to that moment. Uh, but I will share a story that's off, awful special to me. The, the price tag of losing three times in a row, you know, the, the weight of that. I, um, uh, I told Denny as we pulled into Lewiston that year at the World Series, you have to cross a river to get into downtown Lewiston. Uh, as you're coming from the airport. And, and I told Denny, if we're not taking anything less than a first place trophy home this year. I'll throw it in the river on the way back out of town if it's less than that. And we all laughed, you know, and, I mean, I wasn't serious, but in my heart I was. Well, um, when we won and we actually got the final out and against Embry-Riddle and that national championship game I was sitting at the end of the bench and Denny was at the other end and the players rushed the field and I literally tried to stand up 
and rush out there with them, but my legs didn't work. I think I was just so overwhelmed with we finally did it. You know, we got this done. We finally did it. And I had to sit back down because I, I don't know how to explain it. I've never had that feeling in my life. Uh, but all of a sudden, I, you know, I looked down and I was looking at the floor in the dugout and Denny, I saw these feet in between mine and I looked up and it was Denny and he was standing there and he goes, what the hell are you doing? And I said, Denny, I can't get up. And I was serious. And he reached down and picked me up like a rag doll and gave me the biggest bear hug in the world. And there's a picture in my office of him that I shared deeply in my heart. Um, of him and I walking out towards the dog pal and he's literally holding me up. It's a picture of our backside as we're walking and he's got his arm around me and, and he was literally holding me up. I, I was struggling to walk. I was so overwhelmed with thankfulness, but we got to share that together, you know, and it was like, uh, it was an amazing memory. And then the last one I have to add was last year when we didn't make it. You know, we were one game short, one win short of getting back to the World Series. And I've never seen a team embrace a situation, you know, regardless of what it is, over all these years of coaching. Uh, at the beginning of the year last year, I asked the team to make a commitment that on no given day would they create any extra stress for Denny. I threatened him a little bit. I told him, if you do, we're going to have serious trouble between us. And that team embraced any situation and, and it was so, you know, there was never a day that we had any issues with discipline or whatever, because everybody fell in line to, to try their best for Denny. And when we fell a game short, it was the most disheartening thing to watch uh, in the eyes of those players. And of course, everybody involved myself as well too, because we were all so determined to get Denny back to Lewiston and, you know, I had to remind him at the end with Denny standing there as we were just wrapping things up after that final loss that, you know, keep your head up. I've never seen a team that get, had given more to a man than that team gave to Denny, which Denny had given to those boys and every other team we've ever had his whole life. They embraced his situation so deeply. And I also reminded them, though, to not forget the lesson they learned throughout the course of this past season, uh, the courage that Denny stood for, Denny never complained. I'm telling you, Joey, I never heard him complain a day. And there was days that I knew he was really struggling. He had sat in a chair getting, you know, an infusion the day before for eight, nine hours in a chair, and he's back out on the, the field the next day. Um, usually with Denny, it was the day, two days after the infusions that he really struggled. And I knew when to look for it. And he'd get mad at me because I'd make him drink his water and eat something in between games. And he, then he wasn't the type that enjoyed somebody babysitting him or taking care of him. But, but, um, but I wanted the boys to remember, and I knew I didn't have to ask him what you guys witnessed this year. I told him is the, the, a testimony of courage. And, and how to – because he didn't have to be there at times. There were times – we went on a road trip last year. We had an infusion the day before. We took the team down the night before, and everybody kept asking me, is Denny going to be here? And I said, yeah. Even my wife told me, he's not going. He had that yesterday. He's got a follow-up in the morning. And I kept telling everybody, he's going to be here. And sure enough, he walked in. He drove all the way down to, to Fort Worth – and got there 20 minutes before the ball game and walked in the dugout and said, let's go to work, boys. That was Denny. Never complained the whole time. And and these boys will never forget. They saw the truest act of courage they'd ever witnessed in their life. It'll stay with them forever. Yeah. Well, I, this conversation is going to stay with me, too. And I, I appreciate you sharing. It means a lot to, to hear that uh, from your perspective and, and about Coach Craybaugh. Uh, looking ahead now, then, as, as we transition into this season and the open to your season is not very far away. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But uh, you have, a, a, well, there are new players in this lineup. I mean, the roster is not like what it was last year. No cross factor, no Peyton Crisp. And I could go down the list and, and uh, read off a lot of names that you probably wish might have one more season there in, in the Stars uniform. Eli Davis, an All-American coming back for you on the mound, as well as uh, Grant Harrison, another senior coming back for you in the mound. Jesse Fontaboa coming back as well. Seniors there. Can you talk about this team and, and what you see now? 
You know, it is, Joey. It's a, it's a new look. I mean, we, we, uh, I have to go back first and trace this through the summer uh, with the portal now uh, affecting college athletics like it is. And, you know, most people don't realize how much uh, small schools benefited from those Division One transfer guys that would trickle in. And obviously, if you go back and research our rosters over the years, we've had a lot of them, you know. And uh, but it, we lost our three top recruits right after the draft and the draft got pushed back to late July this year. And then there was kids that were hesitant to sign because they were waiting to see what happened with the draft and if it would open up scholarships across the board at, at Division One schools. And and uh, it's the, the whole climate of of this portal thing has changed everything at every in every sport but we ended up long story short we lost our three top recruits right after the draft um and i decided and i'd actually told denny in june uh if we lose guys um, i don't want to just rush out and replace them with whatever we can find because it's too late in the process last year you mentioned eli davis and darian looper was another one the year before I signed those two guys the last weekend of July before school started, but I had all summer to recruit them. Um, you know, so I, I was working on, but last year we had to wait till July 19th for the draft. to actually start. And, uh, and that there wasn't any time to recover and, and recruit. When I, when I'd lose somebody to draft in the years past, I'd still have all of June, all of July and a little bit of August to try to make up for it. Well, there wasn't any time. So what we ended up doing is we shifted gears. And I told Denny, and this was, uh, this was in June, that if we did lose those guys, I would rather wait until the break and try to pick up some guys because a lot of Division One schools had over-recruited and overspent. The porthole adjusted everything. And uh, that's exactly what ended up happening. So, yes, I'm going to miss Cross Factor. Uh, I don't think there's a coach in the country that was – wouldn't wish they had him in his lineup. Peyton Crispin and Darian Looper and to you know just name a few. Fred Walters had a great year for us in his role last year. Dylan Taylor was another one, you know, just kind of ran our pitching staff and was an exceptional defensive catcher. But uh, what we ended up doing is we brought in four new guys uh, at the break. Two of them were transfers from OU. And then we got two transfer uh, junior college players. And I think we recovered pretty well. I, I really think we might have actually come out on the better end of things than the three guys that we lost this summer. But when you say that, you know, obviously that scoreboard hasn't went on yet. And, <laughs> and uh, we definitely had an outstanding fall. Um, the, the guys like Evan Mon and Jesse Fontaboa and – and uh, just to name a few, they really stepped up in those leadership roles, uh, hiring Tanner Schinniger, who just finished his season, uh, his eligibility last year as our new pitching coach, which Tanner was actually when Denny couldn't be here uh, in the last two years. Tanner was the guy that stepped in and ran the pitching staff and. And, uh, and the players really embraced that. They were excited about us hiring him as the, the new pitching coach. So we had a really good fall. I'm looking forward to see what these four new guys can bring to the table to kind of help us. We, they filled some holes that we needed to fill. And uh, and now we're just anxious. They're they're ready to get started. I'm sitting here up in the press box with Rich, and we're looking out over the field. And it's snowing like crazy right now, of course. And – and uh, it, it's fitting because it never fails when it's about time to get the season started off. That's when the weather gets really weird on us. Well, yeah, I, I knew that was in the forecast, and, and I, I was going to ask you about that. I, I'd love to, to ask you one final question, Coach. And the, the weather hasn't – it hasn't turned into snow where I am just yet in the southern part of Oklahoma, but uh, I know that uh, we're forecast to get that too. It's just a lot of cold rain right now. Snow's probably a little bit prettier there on the field at Jim Wade Stadium. Uh, Coach – Preseason favorite in the Sooner Athletic Conference, again, number 11 in the country in the preseason NAIA poll. And the season gets underway, weather permitting, uh, this week, uh, as you all will head down to Louisiana, take on LSU Alexandria on the road, three-game series there, a team that played its last game last year there at Jim Wade Stadium as yeah. well, the Oklahoma City bracket in the NAIA playoffs. And then the following weekend, you have a, a doubleheader with Clark uh, to open things up at home. 
pretty much the entire month of February. I mean, fans of OCU baseball can come to Jim Wade Stadium to watch Stars play because I don't think you leave the property uh, mm-hmm. pretty much uh, until March. Sooner Athletic Conference schedule gets underway on the road, and and that is uh, at Wayland Baptist. So uh, the start to your season. Yeah, that's traditional. I mean, we usually play a lot of home games to begin with, and and uh, it's not really by design. It's people want to come here and play. I mean, it's really neat. I think um, without sounding egotistical, uh, when you have the tradition that we have, people want to come. They, uh, they, it's kind of that if you build it, they will come, you know, and, and we've always been lucky. It's changed a little bit here in the last few years with the, the conferences outside of us, like the KCAC up in Kansas. They've, their conference has gotten so big, we used to really depend on that to be a source of midweek games. But now that conference is actually playing midweek weekend. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, weekend conference series. But now they've been forced to play midweek conference games as well. So we're not getting as much travel as we used to. It's getting harder to get those midweek games scheduled. But but um, you know, it, it, I'm really looking forward to this and, and getting it kicked off. The boys certainly are. There, you know, there comes a point in time where you can tell practice is becoming a little monotonous. And, and that's the case right now. And it's typical. We're used to it. We just – they've grinded hard. We push these guys. They they go to class all day. They come to practice. Then they go to study hall. And then they go to weights every night. So we keep them on a regimented schedule. But at the same time, you know, it's like I, I think it builds character within them. And they realize how much work they put into it, which motivates them to go out and reward themselves with playing well. So uh, looking forward, though, to kicking it off. Well, Coach, that should get underway again, weather permitting this week, just uh, days away. And, and I'm sure the boys are ready to see someone with a different color uniform, one that's uh, always a big deal as you get ready. Coach Keith Lytle, first off, let me say it has been a privilege to get to visit with you and to speak with you. I've seen you before there uh, as a part of the team, but uh, getting to hear your perspective on all these years, three plus decades, and then, of course, the time with Coach Craybon, getting to hear more about him and uh, know more about him as the, the man as well as the coach. It's been an honor to get to visit with you today, sir, and I appreciate that. We will definitely be following the Stars this season and look forward to to seeing how this year, your first year uh, as the head coach there, turns out. Coach Keith Lytle here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you, sir, again for taking time with us today. God bless you. Oh, God bless you too, Joey, and it's a privilege to spend time with you as well. You take care. We'll see you hopefully up in our press box someday soon here. I'm counting on it. All right. Take care, Joey.